everybody, uh, I'm Lucy Siegel and welcome to our Healthy Seas Lab, uh, Web Labs. This is uh, our third in the series and today I'm really, really excited about this one. This one is about how you take an idea about doing the right thing uh, into an impact startup what even is an impact startup? Maybe we'll discuss that as well. And then how do you grow that idea and that desire to do the right thing into a really successful business? Uh, we're gonna find out how. Um, I'm gonna introduce you to everyone and they're gonna wave as I introduce and shout hey, so then they come on the screen because that's the way Zoom works. Um, so hello to Madeline von Hohenthal and Ben Venka uh, from Bracenet. Hi. Hello, Hi, nice, nice to meet you. you. Nice to meet you all. Hello. Brilliant. They didn't do the wave, but we got to meet them, which is very, very good. Um, we should just say, I hope Madeline doesn't mind me saying this, but um, she is about to have a baby and she has had some contractions. So this could be a very, very interesting, auspicious uh, web lab indeed. I think it's a healthy seed first. It's very, very exciting. <laughs> Um, you will also see working away our two Bracenet stars, Anne, and you'll have to tell me your name because I wrote it down and I can't find it. Semina? Samira, or you can just call me Sam. It's okay. Sam. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good afternoon. <laughs> Hello to both of you, you're very welcome. Um, now, Sam and Anne are making Bracenets live. So we're gonna check in with them from time to time. I understand they're not gonna uh, show us the whole process because why would they? I mean, it's their IP, um, but we are gonna see it. Can, we just, can you just hold up the material so we see where you've started from? So this is a net, so, like we received them. And then we're just starting to cut them into strings, literally like strings of wool. I mean, it's just so we can make a little ball out of it. Very cool. So we're literally seeing the process from the start. So we have a live brace net make, and we possibly have a live birth. And I cannot deliver anything better than that, but I'm going to. I'm going to introduce you briefly to Jenny Yanu, who is um, Head of Communications for Healthy Seas, who's going to explain a little bit about the great partnership between Bracenet and Healthy Seas. Hello, Jenny, over to you. Hello, Lucy. Hello, everyone. Um, well, our partnership with Bracenet began as a solution to fulfill a need. Not all nets are nylon, so they cannot all be regenerated into Econil yarn, which is a big part of why Healthy Seas was founded in the first place. So we started to cooperate with Bracenet to reuse other types of plastic found in fishing nets. Over the last few years, this partnership has flourished and has been successful toward achieving our common goal, raising awareness about plastic pollution and the importance of clean and healthy seas. Healthy Seas began as a small initiative and Bracenet as a small Hamburg startup at around the same time. And it's really beautiful to see all that we have accomplished together. So very happy that Madeleine and Benjamin are with us today to share their story from waste to wear. Amazing. And, and happy birthday, by the way. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday to Jenny. Oh, wait, actually, I'm embarrassed, but it is Jenny's birthday. And she is celebrating it with this amazing web lab. Okay, we're about to get started. Remember, we really like to have your questions and make these really interactive. And I know that Madeleine and uh, Ben are really happy to answer questions. I'm sure Sam and Anne will as well. Um, so pop those into the Q&A uh, box as we go along. Um, so guys, I'm going to come to you, Ben and Madeleine, first. Um, a person doesn't just launch an, entrepren uh, an entrepreneurial venture. You can't just launch it anytime, anywhere. There have to be the right conditions, the right inspiration. Even the stars have to be aligned. Could you tell us about how you came to start Bracenet and tell us a little bit about your origin story? I think the most important thing to know is that it's like the passion about um, the thing at the end because, um, yeah, we're getting a baby maybe today, other persons have a birthday and uh, we're having a call. So that's uh, almost our last uh, five years. Um, to yeah work all the time and to um, to work on that idea and to make the problem smaller or the world a little bit better so that's for the beginning I think the most important thing that you need so yeah and I think there are two two ways to start a 
start a business or start a startup. On the one hand, you have uh, the people who really uh, see the market and see numbers and see places where they can build up something and the people who see a problem and want to solve it or work on it. And we are more in that direction that we saw something and we wanted to do something against this. And it was never the idea to build up really a business. It was just something we want to do something good besides our uh, main jobs. And then it grows and grows like organically uh, because it was not really the plan. We are not, no entrepreneurs at all. It just, we came across this and wanted to solve something. And yeah, that's, that's it <laughs> almost. Okay, tell us a little bit about the problem and where you saw it. I've read that you were in East Africa. Is that mm -hmm. right? When you first came across waste, ghost nets or fishing yeah. waste. Tell, mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about that process yeah. and who, who led who? Because there's, there's always one instigator. Yeah, it, it was um, yeah, our one year holiday. So we took uh, at this time uh, four weeks in one piece because we worked a lot um, at this time in the marketing. And uh, that's where we met each other because we were working a lot just on the coffee machine. And uh, then we decided at this year, that was also like really luck also to go to this place because usually we um, made a really big research about the targets where, where to go. And we had like six or seven um, countries um, yeah, where we had the chance to go. And it was then um, the east coast of Africa, Tanzania and Zanzibar. And um, we went there and saw the problem from the first sight. It was like a really huge problem. We saw the really big nets under the water. And um, yeah, these uh, impressive colors uh, of the nets, like all these neon colors and, and red and blue and yellow. And um, yeah, we talked to the people um, in, the, in, in the village there. Um, if it's like the problem that we see, like all these, dead animals on site um, who are tangled in the net and um, and they said yes it's a really big problem because um, they get less fish every year and um, also like all the small fishermen over there had like a really big problem to fish um, because there were like these kilometer long nets and uh, they were fishing without any reason and um, yeah so that uh, was the start where we started this discussion every day on the beach and uh, started to collect some nets and thought about that problem and talked to the people over there in the country and started to research already in the internet if there if it's a, a thing if it's just that it's global or is it just local it's a local problem and then we found out it could be um, a worldwide problem but um, yeah there was not really a lot on the internet at this time right yeah it was the year 2015 where all the ocean trash topic was not so big uh, as it is at the moment so it was yeah really really low and uh, to find something in the press uh, in the media about it and especially the ghost net problem was not really big at that time if you type in uh, like ghost nets uh, or in german like geisternetze you just found uh, articles from from her disease and ghost diving um, so we thought, okay, it's, it would be cute if we spend our holidays in collecting nets, but it wouldn't have the, the impact it should have be. Mm -hmm. So it was clear from the beginning that when we found out, okay, this could be a great idea to do really something to upcycle these nets into something new, That's not really material. recycle, just yeah. upcycle it and have it on, on your wrist as a reminder that, that it could be something. But it was clear that we need cool and strong partners at that point. So this is also the, the start where we met uh, Healthy Seas the first time. Okay, I wanna ask you about that partnership. Um, I didn't realize it was so early on that you formed a partnership. Um, if you could explain a little bit about that partnership and um, also about the product. So the Bracenet itself, how quickly did you design that or did you just, decide that would be your first product and i understand it's no longer your own pro your only product yeah. so maybe you could also talk about the other products that you now have mm -hmm. yeah it was uh, actually really crazy so we met the first time a half year later because we made a really big research about ngos companies who were already already working in that theme um, of ghost fishing nets and um yeah and then we found um, healthy seas and that was actually the only company for us or ngo 
who was really transparent with their donations and with their work. And um, yeah, so it was yeah not really hard to decide to meet each other. And um, at this time, that was in January, like almost four months later after that holiday, um, we had um, the idea how we could name something and we had like one prototype but nothing that we could sell at this time <laughs> actually we were had were you from a design background no, no. Oh. <laughs> and also not from handcraftsmanship where when we are doing the bracelets right now Anna, Anna and uh, Zamira wouldn't uh, they would say okay please leave the <laughs> please leave the production area because you're, you're so bad in doing it they are much more yeah more qualified than we are yeah, yeah this time we started at the kitchen table with his parents uh, they are still working actually at bracenet and um yeah so we were sitting there every day and tried a different kind of glues like is it a vegan glue um, is it transparent um can it hold against heat and cold and water and everything? So yeah, we had just one product at the end and that's um, uh, how we made it to Healthy Season, explained our idea actually. And um, yeah, and then they came up with a lot of nets already at this appointment and uh, were really surprised. Um, I remember that day really, really good. Actually, when we came there, were like the whole, whole place full of nets and we were like, oh, that is the net that we are looking for. And then uh, we explained um, how it could look like, like how we built up a website. It was not online at this uh, this time, but we built up uh, our website that we had and a little logo and branding and um, our first product and explained uh, what we had in mind. And um, yeah, they were really happy. Um, I, I remember Veronica said uh, that is the first time that we have a product um, out of the raw net, um, like the real net. So you can see it and feel it and um, yeah, so that was yeah the, the start of, of our relationship. Actually. And then yeah. comes uh, one after another. So they introduce us of course to ghost diving, to no fear, where uh, the people there we met also uh, uh, yeah, a few times already in, uh, in Turkey, in Lithuania, Norway. So mm -hmm. and yeah, spent diving trips with, uh, with the divers in Greece and uh, in the Netherlands. So it's it's really, really, really close uh, partnership. Yeah. Since the beginning. Since yeah. the beginning, since yeah, four and a half years now. And then it took us, we are almost a half year, like after that meeting, um, to build everything more up, like to have a strong partner in the back and uh, somebody who said, uh, we believe in you, that's a really great idea and we would be happy if you can help us. And um, yeah, so it took us a half year and uh, we made prototypes on prototypes, talked to companies like to have like a really good product, a good quality product um, that is not trash at the end and to have like a cycle to take it back if something happened with the product. And of course also for the communication. And um, then we went online in September, so almost a year later. I think it was the fourth. I'm not really sure about the date. And uh, mm -hmm. then the website came up uh, just with one push and uh, yeah and nothing happened at the beginning of course <laughs> I hope that's not going to be how your labour is <laughs> felt like you were describing labour there um, and so that, let's just quickly talk about figures so how many did you produce at the start and how many are you producing today and do you remember where did you sell your first consignment do you remember what that was like? Mm -hmm. um, at the beginning, it was really crazy. Of course, um, we spread our link to on our Facebook pages and we created a small um, Instagram page and we shared it with friends and family. So once in a while, somebody ordered one <laughs> and it was, our, it was next to our main job. So uh, we packed um, everything at night and brought it to the post office in the morning. But it was like, yeah, if we looked it over, it looked already a lot, but it was um, like almost a couple of months, like 14 brace nets every day that we sold. I remember that number because we had no idea how many we uh, need to sell to make that run uh, as an own company at the end. And uh, as Benjamin said, that was not the target. So we sold like over a couple of months, 14 brace nets a day. And then... Without media, I yeah. think this is important to say that uh, because we are coming or the background is marketing. So what was quite easy for us is build a website and to, to have a cool look and feel. 
but we also said that we are, don't want to spend any media budget on selling the product. So it was not the plan to uh, buy ads on Google or Facebook or in that time Instagram wasn't that no. wasn't a topic. But in yeah, in that typical channels, we don't want to spread money in it that somebody sees the ads and says, okay, I want to buy it. We thought yeah. we have the romantic idea <laughs> in our head that uh, it's just uh, yeah, from one person to another, yeah. networking and say, hey, this is a cool brand, have a look at them, uh, talking about the problem, because also on the, on the side you see, okay, first, first of all, you don't uh, come directly to the shop, you have a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of text about the problem, first of all, and about the cooperation with head disease, ghost diving, and no fear. We explain it a lot. And the, the selling of Bracenet is second. So we don't want to spend media. And this yeah. is, till now, we didn't spend any euro on a media budget. It's so we don't buy, things, buy, buy ads or something like that. Just pay up PR and, yeah, that's it. So, so in a sense, you think that the narrative and the message is better explained from person to person? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. So, and of course, that's like the, the main thing. So if you don't have the story about the bracelet itself, it's like just, if you don't know if the, this is the real color or the real knot of the net um, in the product, then it's maybe just a band or something. But um, of course, the story makes it round. And for us, it was really important to be really transparent from the beginning about how we work, how we produce, where we produce, that we get uh, all materials, um, if possible, in Germany. Um, that we stamp everything on our own and um, yeah, that we know how much money is coming in, how much donations we can forward, what is, uh, yeah, what is planned with the money and that all, all our supporters can also subscribe or um, yeah, choose um, at the end uh, what, what's happening with their money at the end. So, and yeah, and that started and um, like almost a half year after that, after that shop, um, we got a request from, um, our first big client at the end, uh, there was uh, the German telecom um, communication, a phone communication company. And um, that was at this time uh, <laughs> a really big, uh, a really big job uh, that we can't handle like, at the end, <laughs> actually. So um, that the deal was um, at this time, buy one, get one free. And we never would do it again. We would never do it again. They asked us twice, but uh, we said no. At the end of what we were lucky because it was like the, the start of everything, like for the communication and for PR and everything. But um, yeah, they had like a newsletter that they so, uh, sent out to 700,000 people. And um, wow. yeah. <laughs> and I remember that we were sitting at the dinner table and uh, we're just eating and came back from, from all our main jobs at the end. And uh, then we got like this uh, direct messages for the orders and uh, our phone was just going crazy. We were like sick from one to another second and said, okay, we have no idea how we can handle that. And it took us at the end um, about eight weeks, six to eight weeks, I'm not sure, um, to send everything out and to handcraft everything in the backyard of Benjamin's parents. And uh, friends and family helped us, and some of them are still working with us since then, <laughs> by accident. And um, yeah, that was the start. So we were really surprised that nobody was angry that we delivered that slow. And um, we were sending one newsletter with a picture from the backyard from us and said, we are so sorry, but we can't be faster than that. And then we got messages like, how can we help? Can we join? Can we work? <laughs> And um, yeah, and I think that's uh, the difference to yeah to maybe other startups where where they have in mind already how can we scale it fast. <laughs> this is not something you can do with Bracenet. So we have a, a team of now around thirty four people with us, but it's still everything is handmade. It's Bracenet, docky, just whatever. We made it here in Hamburg by hand, and you can't push a a uh, button on the machine and say, okay, produce me now 20 bracelets. It's not possible. So everything is really, really handmade. And this is yeah, something other startups wouldn't, wouldn't do because they want to produce fast and a lot of products. So, yeah. It really is an extreme.
extraordinary story. I've worked a lot with artisans and craftspeople over the years, and this kind of idea of taking something from the deep sea that's causing so much problem, and then, you know, uh, uh, craftspeople, artisans like Anne and Sam are now, you know, fe feeling that fiber. We have a question actually, which is part of this, you know, part of this thought, so I'll ask it now. So Vicky, um, says congratulations first of all um, and her question is what is the production time frame for making such items from raw netting I understand there must be some treatment involved before production so maybe you could answer that and maybe we could go to Anne and Sam to have a look at um, the actual process yeah so um, we can't really say it in numbers because um, it totally depends on the net like how clean is when we get the net so we have uh, different sources where we get the net. Some people are calling us um, since uh, a couple of months um, and sending us nets. Um, of course, nets are coming from uh, healthy seas directly and from Nofia. And um, uh, we are not producing one brace net um, complete. So we have steps in between them. Um, I think uh, Anne showed us at the beginning like how the nets look like. So you have like a hole or a piece of a net that you just collect first, like decide which uh, which color you want. And then uh, we start to uh, cut it into pieces, like into really long ropes, like that you have like one stripe of a net, like a kilometer long. And then you uh, cut it into pieces into- By the, the way, sorry to, sorry to interrupt, but if, if anybody wants to see what Anne is doing, if you just click on the box with Anne and Sam in and, and say pin video, it will come up big. Sorry, wow. carry on Madeline. Yes. And then uh, you cut it into the pieces, into the sizes. Uh, what we also do is like special sizes. So some clients want a necklace or uh, wear it as a, a foot bracelet at the end. So um, yeah, we are doing also special. So that takes a little bit longer. But um, yeah, and it depends really on the person and on the net. So some nets um, are really easy to handle and to work with it. Uh, we use heat to cut the knots. And um, yeah, some of them are much more easy than other ones. So we can't really say it in numbers, but yeah, around about it's uh, 20 minutes yeah, from you... really the, the net to the final bracelet. But then you have products, of course, which take much longer, like the dog leashes. You need sometimes uh, more than two hours to, to manufacture this, this leash. It really depends on the net, how many knots you have, as Madeleine said. Like here, this one has three knots. You have to do more work than just this one on uh, where you just have two, for example. So it really depends on, on the net. This is also something uh, why you can't manufacture it on a different way. You, you, need it, you need to do it by hand. Yeah, and if you start uh, working at our place, um, then uh, it takes like around two to three months um, till the pro product is looking really good that we can sell it and um, that uh, yeah you have a number that you can produce. Of course, uh, at the beginning everything's a little bit slower. And um, as Benjamin said, if we would start again to produce now, uh, it would just look like a mess. And um, of course, we are changing also product production steps. So at the beginning. Uh, for the heat, we use a uh, creme brulee um, burning thing <laughs> that you use in the kitchen usually. So uh, the way uh, from where we were coming from till now is like... Transforms a bit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so a little blowtorch for a creme brulee. That's very clever. Yeah. Very clever. We started with a straw lighter and then a creme brulee burner and now we are a bit more professionalized. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. So um, uh, thanks, Anna Sam. We'll check in with you in a minute as well. Um, so um, we've got people joining us from all over the world. We've got someone from Albuquerque in Mexico. We've got somebody uh, in Italy, uh, <laughs> in Germany, Essex, Warwickshire, Paris. Um, wow. Send us some questions. Send us some questions because it's really great to have you here. And especially if you're trying to set up your own business. Um, you know, these guys are inspirational um, in terms of an impact startup so don't be shy so let me take another question here let me see um, oh some of my questions disappeared okay maybe they were answered um, this is from Nunziata Parisi um, she's the teacher coordinator in an Erasmus project 
um, wow. concerning green startups and involving four European countries. Uh, her course, How to Become a Green Entrepreneur. One of our goals is raising interest in the environment by motivating students and improving their entrepreneurial abilities in green business. How much effort is required in your business? How challenging is it for you every day? Let's, she, wants, she wants the truth. Yes. <laughs> so if, as, as we said before, I, I think you need to be, or you don't need to be really qualified in, in something special like, like we both. Like us. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, the, the really the most important thing is really that you, that you have a, the, the passion for it, that you really want to change, change something, change, uh, something out there. And it could be, Everything. I mean, the ocean is so big. There is not only the the net problem. There are many more problems. Uh, if you focus focus on that and really want to change uh, something, I think it pops up. Yeah, from from its own. So, and what also helps, uh, especially for us, is when you don't do it alone. Because to motivate you every day with the same topic, after a while, it gets uh, a bit down, and you have to motivate yourself again to to really do something because you have so many things like especially in the beginning uh, uh, which are not really uh, yeah coming to that point you you want them to to be there are so many like crashes yeah don't see uh, don't see all the problems like just uh, but just, there will come a few there will come a few that's but why that's why sorry the sorry, my yeah, yeah, again. Yeah. <laughs> that's why uh, it's good to have to really have a partner because when when you're not motivated the partner's motivated and the same the other way around so it's good to have someone and now a, a big team which motivated us every day as well but especially in the beginning it's good to have someone on, on by your side yeah because it's really easy to have an idea about something it looks so easy like even the brace net itself it looks like oh well there's so much net why somebody else has not the idea before or like um and we get all the time the question uh, please produce um, a grocery bag or something it's like to have an idea how the product can look like is really easy to have but to make it as a product that you can sell at the end that has a quite a high quality and um that you yeah that looks nice at the end and uh, we have like a whole production line and um, also the people who uh, produces them um, get paid from it. Um, it's not that easy, but you need to start somewhere. And we have a lot of ideas, but sometimes you just hook on something. You, we have the idea in mind, but we have no idea how to produce it. So we just give the idea into the team or the other way around. And then um, they just start. So um, as an example, we started to produce... What's that? What's that? What's the leashes, shoe leashes, yeah, shoe leashes. I don't know what the word in English is actually. Shoe laces. Shoe laces. Yes. Shoe laces. So very similar. Oh. <laughs> so we had the idea for the shoe laces a really long time, and um, Anne had the idea to, um, yeah, how to produce the net or to take the inner side out of the net that it's like more flexible, that it's like usable for for a sports shoe at the end. And then we didn't have the solution for the little ends that you have. Usually you have um, a plastic cap or something. That might be the easiest way, but for us, that's not the solution to put plastic or another plastic actually on the HDPE net because then you have a mixed uh, fiber at the end. So um, Pia and our team, I think it was Pia, um, had then the idea to produce the end of the uh, shoelace also out of a net just to um, yeah, just combine the two colors of net to make it a little bit stronger at the end. It looks actually really, really nice and it's functional. So it needs, sometimes we need the ideas of the whole team to produce like one product. So And yeah, to, to cut it down, you really have to take your time before you yeah. uh, launch uh, yeah, a startup or a product. You really need to yeah, come down, s sleep over it, and try, try, try until it's really something you would buy on your own and you really stand behind it um, and not, not rush and say, okay, I want, to, I want to launch something in two weeks, so it has to be ready. When it's not in two weeks, uh, slow down and 
make it make it final. Yeah, and you have to wear the prototype that you really that you're really sure that the product at the end is usable and um, yeah, and high quality that you're not producing trash again. So um, yeah, that's actually that what you need. Okay, this is all incredibly incredibly good advice. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about longevity, the product, but making the business sustainable, which you've already described, um, how you're planning and how your, you know, observation, you didn't rush it, but what is your kind, what are your plans for the future and how much has COVID-19 impacted the business and how have you been able to weather that particular storm? Yeah. So to, to answer the last question first, the, the COVID topic. Um, yeah, in the beginning, when, when the COVID in, in mid of March this year came, came across Germany, it was like, okay, we had shock in the first two days. We thought, okay, for our business, it's, uh, yeah, it's a quite big hook we're getting there, but uh, it was really, really good to see, especially from the B2C, so the customer side, that the people, um, that, that there were no less, less people on our website. So it was, they were still interested in not just buying the bracelet, but in a corporation, in sending us nets. There were still so many people out there who, yeah, supported us. It was more or less the B2B side, which is a bit uh, of a struggle. Of course, the airlines, uh, which is selling also bracelets on board, like 25 airlines, they, they cut it from one day to another. They say, okay, we are not flying in at, at the moment. We don't need your, your bracelets right now. So it was a huge part of uh, our income, which was not there. But uh, on the other side, it was quite good to see that everyone out there, the, the yeah, the private persons which were still interested really support, yeah. Yeah, and supported. Yeah, and uh, economically we did uh, some decisions uh, that might be not really clever at the beginning. So to hold all the people who are working for us, like our whole team, <laughs> and um, let them in their full-time positions and uh, yeah, go on with the payments and everything. Um, but for us, it, that is everything, like the whole team, the ideas, um, and every, everybody who is like, yeah, working really hard for the oceans day by day. So uh, we made the decision to hold everybody and um, to go into homework at the end. And um, yeah, that was uh, working quite good. Of course, nobody likes to work anymore at home, but um, actually we started to just drive around and uh, bringing nets somewhere and they just brought the brace nets over. Um, by bike and everything so it, it worked quite good and um, what was also really good um, we yeah we were not just waiting what's happening we just started to um, yeah to create new ideas or things where we didn't have time the last half year or last five years actually we had so many ideas so many production steps that were not complete um, so many um, corporations that we didn't follow because we had no time um, next to the daily business so we just yeah, yeah on, on, moved on, on, on the one end. hand it was good that all the exhibitions and presentation all was cancelled also from one day to another so where there, there were like almost three months where then was no external uh, yeah dates for example, like the exhibitions or presentations. So we had a lot of time with the team to, to think about yeah, new ideas, uh, about the prevention topics, about new products. So internally, uh, we had a lot of stuff to do in, in yeah. that time. To get better at the end, so to get better every day. So things where we were not sure or where we were actually also not transparent enough on our website because there was no time to build up a blog or something on the website. So we did that, actually. Everybody was writing blog articles about themes where they were interested in our, uh, our team. And um, so, yeah, we learned a lot during that time. Are you happy with your level of transparency now? I'm not, I'm not um, I'm not, 
Oh, hello. I think we had a bit of a sound oh, issue. Yeah, 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 now it's better. Maybe you can repeat. I just uh, I just heard if we are happy now with our transparency. But yeah. uh, I think you said something after that. No. I, no, that was it, really. Do you, do you feel that everything is available for people to see and trace? And um, It's getting better. So we are still working on it day by day um, because there were what we recognize every week is we have a, a weekly meeting at the end and um, talking about the running projects and corporations and requests um, from politicians, um, from the economy, from companies. And um, it's so much. So it's not that easy to build everything up in, in that short uh, amount of time. But um, we are starting to get better, like to show like also the nets on the website and um, to talk about um, yeah different themes who are going viral at the moment who are people in discussion like mixed fabrics or is there uh, any plastic out there that you can just put on your compost in the backyard or something like requests that we get day by day and things that we learned in the last five years that help us a lot to understand what the problems are or things that uh, can yeah everybody do on their own even without buying a product, even without buying a brace net, just um, to make things better and to communicate how that works. Or even uh, the question before was uh, from from Veronica, I think was her name. And uh, we work also a lot of uh, with people from universities, like students who are writing their master thesis and um, yeah, spend like a half year or a year on uh, yeah, really, really important topics and to network them together with all the people that we know to make the projects better and um, to build something new up. So, yeah. Okay, we are um, coming up to, we've only got a few minutes left. Um, uh, Jenny has answered some of the technical questions. We've had offers of nets and all sorts of different filaments that I don't understand, which Jenny is dealing with. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, a lot of people saying thank you for the amount of detail. Um, Sofian wants to be part of your movement. Um, yes. mm -hmm. Doesn't live near you, but wants to join your team. Are you going to expand in the future? So it'd be great to hear about your future plans. And what I'd like to know is, have you achieved what you set out to achieve? <laughs> yeah, I think that was also the good thing that we don't have any targets, uh, especially in the beginning. We have no, no business plan, no really uh, a target. We just wanted to, yeah, do something good, uh, support head disease by the donations, uh, be on board with the ghost divers. That was the target we had to do something good. And um, yeah, no, no figures at all. Of course, at the moment, or uh, what, what a target is, is that we can pay everyone who is on the payroll <laughs> and th this target we, we achieved. So everything which comes uh, on top is, is perfectly. So, so we reached much more than we ever expected. So from a small idea that came up on the beach um, to sell something and to raise donations for somebody um, that was actually really happy about that, um, we came up to um, yeah, do pro project management for companies who ask us to help them to be more sustainable. What is like, um, yeah, the thing where we earn our man money at the end. So um, we are not just having speeches and we are also talking to companies or um, the economy and listening to their problems, like um, even to companies where we think maybe it's not really matching with us. Um, we are really carefully actually, and um, but we are listening really in detail. And if they like to change something, um, yeah, we, we saw that it's and really easy to really, yeah, to have a really good partner on board to change things. And so we changed whole com production steps and companies where we never thought that uh, that's even possible. Like just uh, change the products in their shop at the end to help them with sustainable materials, to make clear what the problem is with mixed materials. And um, sometimes of course also selling the brace nets itself and to spread the message um, where we have a, a talk over there, but also to create ideas totally, um, yeah, different ideas than just the brace nets. So create new products and replace them for products that um, had just a short lifetime before. So 
as an example, we built um, like a surf leash spring for a surfing company in Portugal or worldwide company at the end. Um, who had like surf leash strings and um, they produce a lot of trash with them and they ask us can we produce something out of the net that looks similar and we did and so now they have like a product that they can use on and on and on it's just like a really small idea and that's like just one and then idea. you get uh, from time to time messages or emails or photos from families uh, which are making holiday in the nearby coasts and finding some nets and they send it to us and say hey should we send it to you? Uh, what have, what can we do with the with the net? And that are the moments which are making me and you and the whole team even sometimes more happy than uh, when a big company is calling to to help them to be yeah to be more sustainable. Yeah. So it's the mix mix out of everything and the small targets which are motivating us uh, every every day. That's very cool. Hello, by the way, Mark from Los Angeles, who's also with us today. So many people. Um, everyone's saying how much they've enjoyed your discussion. Unfortunately, we're going to have to bring it to an end, not only because uh, Madeline has to have a baby, <laughs> <laughs> but also because we must do that. Um, Anne and Sam, let's check in with you um, and um, see, see, see what's happened while we've been, while we've been talking. Presumably you've made loads of brace nets. Well, we haven't really made brace nets yet, but we've been, you know, <laughs> continually doing preparations for this. So I cut the string now into length. And the next step would be, I don't know if you can see, but the next step would be to cut or sort off the ends and bits and make them to proper knots. And um, then turn it into a brace net, like this one. There we go. And then we're also at the moment producing keychains. So just maybe that's even easier to see because that's a like a bracelet and big <laughs> <laughs> would be this i don't know if you can see it yeah and then it ends up being a proper keychain with a ring oh cool at the very end so which is a great product as well i mean it's just so well yes it's just endless what we can come up with to do <laughs> with this kind of simple material um, well, it's very cool how you are able to do that. You make it look easy, but we know because um, the guys told us it's not easy at all. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Thanks for being with us today. Um, I should say, and we, you know, we're very grateful from a healthy seas point of view as well that um, uh, it, it, you know, bracelets is such an important part of revenue for for um, healthy seas to keep these programs going. Healthy seas rely a hundred percent on donations. So we know these are very tough times, but if you are able to spare anything at all, it would be great if you could donate through um, the Healthy Seas webpage. Um, this has been a really, really great discussion, but it's not our last. We have another one coming up, so we'll send out details of that very, very shortly. Um, and it just remains for me to say thank you all for joining us. I know there's a lot of demands on your time. Uh, you've joined us from all over the world. Um, I hope you've got some ideas. I can't wait to hear about your startup, your impact startup projects in the future and I want to say a massive thank you to Jenny for putting this event together and also to Ben and Madeleine and I wish you so much luck with the baby it is very, thank you. very exciting thank you, thank thank you. so much good luck thank you bye 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 bye, bye. 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 bye.